the Reverend Fathers, brothers and sisters in Christ. I know you know the answer, but I will still ask it. What is the most persecuted religion in the world right now? And the answer is Christianity. And within Christianity, the answer is the Catholic Church. It should not surprise us because the Catholic Church was born from the side of persecution. It was born from the wound of persecution. It was born from the wounded side of Christ, all because he was persecuted for obeying the Father's will. Persecution, there is persecution. There has always been persecution. The good news is Christ was persecuted, so must we be. If you look at it as bad news, the bad news is the church will remain persecuted until the end of time because that is the nature of following Christ, to be persecuted. But then the question needs to be asked, how do we respond to the persecution of churches right now? in the year 2020, in the midst of COVID-19, what is our response? And here, I want to make a stand. It is true that the church is being persecuted. But we should not spend our time in self-defense. We should not spend our time in invoking our rights for religious freedom. I think that is the wrong way to go. Because the answer to religious persecution is not that we are given the freedom to worship. It's not that we are given the right to protect ourselves. It is not about the right of self-defense. Why do I disagree with using self-protection and self-defense when we face persecution for only one reason. Christ never defended himself. Christ never protected himself from persecution. In fact, his disciples were already warning him to tone it down. The disciples were already warning him, slow down. And Peter was already planning an escape. And when it was becoming clearer that he was going to be killed, Peter, in fact, said, It should not happen, Lord. It should not happen. And what did the Lord say? Did the Lord say, Yes, Peter, protect me. Did the Lord say, Yes, Peter, put up an army. No. The Lord said, Get behind me, Satan. I am not here to be protected. You are not here to defend me. I did not call you to become my fans club. I did not call you to become my defense army. I do not need a defense department. He did not defend himself. In fact, the opposite was what he did. He said, let them come. You remember the scene at the Garden of Olives? When the Lord was praying and the chosen disciples were sleeping and then the soldiers came, did the Lord run away? Did the Lord defend himself? No. He just said to them, if you're looking for me, I am he. But these men are innocent, let them go. He did not defend himself, he defended his friends. He did not protect himself. He refused to protect himself. And when at that point, Peter wanted to defend the Lord and took the sword and cut the ear of the soldier, what did the Lord do? Did the Lord say, thank you, Peter? No. The Lord rebuked Peter and said, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Put back that sword into that scabbard. 
Have I not told you that you must not be an obstruction for the plan of the Father for me? Did I not tell you, get behind me, Satan, because you are not thinking as God does, but as men do? Now, my dear brothers and sisters, that is how the Lord faced persecution. Not by self-defense, not by protecting himself, not by invoking the right to religious freedom. No. By allowing himself to be arrested by his persecutors, he was actually telling his persecutors, I will die for my friends, I will also die for you. When I am raised on the cross and my blood is shed for the forgiveness of sins, my blood will be shed not only for those who believe in me, my blood will be shed for the forgiveness of those who do not believe in me. That is why at Calvary, the Lord could still say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. There it is, my dear brothers and sisters. We are not cowards when it comes to persecution. Our Lord taught us how to handle persecution. And self-defense, self-protection is certainly not the way. If the military say to you that the best defense is offense, if the soldiers will tell you that if you want to protect yourself, you must attack those who are threatening you, the Lord says to us as we pray for persecuted Christians, put back that sword into that scabbard. Because if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. We cannot meet hostility with further hostility. We cannot meet animosity with more animosity. We cannot meet immaturity with more immaturity. If the church, if our young people are turning against their mother church like adolescent people, rebelling against their parents, like adolescents turning against their father and their mother. It is not for us, Mother Church, to condemn our children who are immature. Ours is to keep on inviting them to rise out of immaturity so that fire will be conquered by love so that violence will be appeased by peace, so that terror may be overcome by prayer, so that the sword may be put back into the scabbard, because it is our destiny to be persecuted. Today, let us ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Would he sue in court? Would he file a libel case? Would he invoke separation of church and state? Would he invoke United Nations agreement on religious freedom? Would he invoke the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights? Brothers and sisters, today as we pray for Christians persecuted worldwide, let us also pray for the grace that those who persecute the church may be blessed. Those who kill Christians may be forgiven because Christ did not only die for believers. Christ did not only die for the good ones and the virtuous. Christ also died for the soldier who pierced his side. Christ also died for the soldier who pounded the nail into his hands and his feet. Christ also died for the soldiers who rebuked him and gambled over his robes. Christ also died for Herod, for Pilate, for the high priests who plotted against him. 
it is time for us to focus our hearts on our persecuted brothers and sisters. But to first persecution, as Jesus did, with love, with compassion, with mercy, with forgiveness, with an invitation, even if you have persecuted me, come follow me, let us break bread together.